Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Kind of a rare thing today. I'm reviewing a watch that I don't sell. It was a personal pickup. It is the Accutron Space View 2020 or the Accutron 2020. Uh, I got it about a month ago or so. It was apparently back ordered, so it took a while for me to get it. Um, but I have it here. I'm not wearing it for a, a particular reason, but I will go. I'm gonna call this a watch and learn because I'm gonna really try to go into how the whole thing operates, um, and then. I want to do another watch and learn after this, um, kind of like evolution of watch movements, because I feel at this point there's so many different watch movements, we could probably talk about all of them in some kind of chronological fashion. So that should be fun. Uh, Accutron is obviously made by uh, Bulova, owned by Citizen, so, but Accutron was kind of split off as its, I want to say it's its own company, um, but still very much uh, Bulova-ish. But the Accutron website is its own website now. Uh, Accutron obviously goes back to, I don't want to get too much of history, but, you know, to uh, 1960 or so. Accutron is kind of a smash of accuracy through electronics. Accu, electronics, Accutron. Uh, so they've been dormant for a while, uh, you know, precisionists or whatever kind. You could say that those were kind of plays on it. But the original Accutron was a tuning fork watch, hummed. This guy does not hum. Works on something very different. So we'll spend a few minutes talking about it. I did read through the patent that they filed for it. Um, it doesn't really tell you that much. I will say, uh, this is my own Islander ISL 5400 bracelet. It, Accutron or Boulevard, whoever you want to call it, they're not very forthcoming with information on the whole thing. Um, and my uh, ISL 85, Robin's Egg Blue, on a different bracelet. Um, they're not very forthcoming with information uh, as far as technical details and stuff. Uh, I would say not as much as like something like Spring Drive is, where you know Seiko really got into the nuts and bolts and told you how everything works. Um, the information they provide with this guy wasn't too much, so... Yeah, it's kind of cobbled together, but it should be cool. It's definitely different. Let's check it out. I apologize in advance for the reflections because the crystal is very deep, as you can see. Um, it's not. It's kind of flat on the top, a little bit dome, so it does pick up a lot of stuff. But anyway, I didn't want to wear it in the opening because I want to show you, I guess, one of the features that it has, which is already happening. Um, this is what they call power save mode. The second hand stops. Whoops. The seconds hand stops at the 12 o'clock position if you're not wearing it for five minutes. Okay, and then after you give it a decent amount of motion, the seconds hand will start up. Now, I guess we'll get into it. So if second hand starts moving as because I'm moving it around, then, you know, great, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Let's, you know, kind of let's treat it like a long animal watch review and talk about the size and stuff. So it is, it is large. I will admit uh, it is 44 millimeters in diameter. Oh, quick backstory. Why did I get this watch? Well, it was mentioned to me. I saw it when it came out a bunch of years ago. Um, I thought it was interesting. It was mentioned to me by uh, the Urban Gentry TTV when I was filming with him not long ago. And then again, I was on a uh, collection conundrum with uh, just the watch and he had said to me, you know, pretty much this watch belongs in your collection. And he was right. So uh, after hearing it from two separate people, I went out and bought one 44 millimeters in diameter, 16 thick to that domed crystal. Wow. It's a high dome. I guess it doesn't really need to be that high. Um, but maybe it's, you know, I guess it kind of completes the look. Um, and then, 50 millimeters lug tip to lug tip it is on a nice croc strap this is real croc um i really liked the black the black the brown strap uh, my what's wrong with me it comes on black and you can <clears throat> you can opt for a green croc i opted for the green croc uh it's 22 millimeters beautiful deployant clasp it's yeah, standard fare uh, let's check out the case back. So Accutron, again, accuracy through electronics. The tuning fork, I guess we'll just go like this. The tuning fork, which kind of is their, is their symbol, right? Electrostatic movement, which is kind of getting ahead of us right now. Space view, caliber, was that NS30? Uh, sapphire crystal, do not open, blah, 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 blah. All the other stuff, serial number. Water resistance, 50 meters. Why you would take this anywhere near water, I have no idea. So let's see. I gave you size and stuff. Oh, weight weighs 104 grams. Um, so 
not terribly heavy, but it is still a decently large watch. The size, I believe, currently is dictated by the technology. Will they shrink this? I don't know. Um, there can't just come a point in life when uh, physics overrides anything you want to do. We came across this many times in engineering where, you know, you, you can't make a low-frequency antenna uh, small because uh, low-frequency things need large areas to resonate. So kind of like an electrostatic generator and electrostatic motors, um, they need a larger surface area. So will they shrink this down? Eh, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, price. 3650 um, bucks. I did go to an authorized dealer. I did purchase it. Oh, the authorized dealer actually was Accutron. That's where I ordered it from. Um, it was on back order, came in, and uh, it just, I've worn it a whole bunch. I've shown it in a bunch of videos. It is a nice watch. So, you'll notice as I'm moving it, if you're looking at the bottom, you can see those two wheels. They are spinning. It looks like a kaleidoscope almost. So, there is a rotor in the watch. You can't see it. And that rotor is geared down, much like a kinetic, I would say. And it's spinning these two these are electrostatic generators. I guess we're going to start talking about function. Um, I want to see if, I really, if I've tackled everything I wanted to talk about. The watch came out. Isn't that cool? The watch came out in 2019. Um, it worked on for obviously many years prior to that. It, unfortunately, when it came out, kind of pandemic hit. Um, so I would say it's taken a backseat in, in a lot of ways. But... It is a really cool watch. So what's happening right now is, as you can see, very sensitive to the rotor moving right in the back. As you spin it, the rotor is, gear, is geared down or geared up, depending on which way you want to look at it, and it's spinning these electrostatic generators. So what is an electrostatic generator? Um, yeah, I guess we're going to get into it. So it's a spinning, two spinning discs right and they are almost fan like in in shape almost like a fan they are rotating above what almost looks to me like to be as i go fast enough and i can see through it like an etched uh, piece of copper etched circuit board like we would do in uh printed wiring boards uh and it's jeweled in the middle and for, for friction to be frictionless and this action much like an electromagnetic motor uh is causing power to be generated that power is being sent up into this, you know, we can call, let's call it a battery. It's some kind of an accumulator, uh, and that is storing the power. So this is how the watch works pretty much, almost like an automatic. As you move, the rotor causes these things to spin, and it generates power. Now, Accutron says that when they deliver the watch to you, when you first receive it, it already has two hours, two hours, <laughs> two years of power reserve built up in the accumulator. Here's where things get a little strange, okay? Well, accuracy. Accuracy is within five seconds a day because it is ultimately quartz-driven. We'll get into the function in a minute. It has two function, two, two power-saving functions. Number one, they call power save, which is, what, which is what it's in right now. So the second hand stops if there is not a ton of activity. Second hand stops at 12 after five minutes. So I'm just going to kind of take it to the side here. I'm going to shake it up a bit like you would a conventional um, automatic. After, so, so power save is after five minutes. And then, here it goes. So the second, so let's talk about the second hand for a second well, before I get into the next mode. Second hand is moving very, very slowly, as you can see. It is not moving with regular seconds. It's playing catch up or regular seconds is catching up to it. When it gets to the correct indication of seconds on here, the second hand will pick up speed and start moving at a normal cadence. Um, so after 10 days of it being in power save mode, it goes into what they call energy save mode. Energy save mode, the hour, minute, and seconds hand all freeze. And why after 10 days if the watch comes with two years of reserve? This one I cannot figure out. Um, that's kind of a strange one to me. I, I don't understand it. I have a feeling it has something to do with battery depletion. And if this battery gets too depleted, the watch simply will not function. It won't be able to recharge itself. I can't verify any of this. Um, I have not... I have not not worn it for 10 days, so I can't really tell you uh, what happens with energy safe function other than, according to the manual, everything stops working. Um, they do say you cannot wind it, put it in an automatic watch winder, like for a mechanical watch. Why? Uh, maybe something to do with magnets. 
Although, other than that, I don't really understand. Um, they do say that if you wear it daily, you'll accumulate about an energy, an energy, you'll accumulate about an hour's worth of energy every day. So let's get into function and what is going on, because th this is watch and learn. So I already told you about these two generators down here that are spinning, and they are really cool to look at. But now all of a sudden, now we see this thing, this is definitely going at a normal seconds cadence, yeah. You see this is now an electrostatic motor. A motor is just a generator, right? Kind of like in reverse, generator generates electricity, uh, kind of. A motor uses electricity uh, for movement, right? So what's going on is this electrostatic motor, which is larger than these two uh, turbines, uh, is powering a bunch of wheels, and that is powering the second hand. So the second hand is moving super, super fluid. There is no perception of stop, start. You know, almost like uh, the 1960 Accutron that, you know, hummed along at 360 ticks a second. Uh, this is super duper fluid. I, I guess theoretically the uh, the rotor is stopping starting you know many 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 times um, but it translates into a very very smooth fluid motion so this is one motor this motor is powering the seconds hand only and this is why the watch has power save mode after five minutes again this turbine shuts down and the second hand docks at 12 if you're not active reason for that is that this is absorbing a lot of energy from the cap there is a stepper motor on the inside as well. That stepper motor is controlling the hour and minute hands as in a conventional quartz watch. So this watch is not driven by tuning fork. It's driven, the time regulating mechanism is certainly a quartz crystal in the shape of a tuning fork like all quartz crystals are in any quartz watch. So we have two motors, you got it? Electrostatic, it's moving just the seconds hand stepper motor like in a conventional watch driving the minute and hour hand but they're all tied both motors are tied to the same quartz oscillator the same time memory if you will the seconds hand even if it's docked knows exactly where it's supposed to be which is why when you wake it up it goes slow and it's waiting to you know for when it's in the position where it's supposed to be and then it takes off in normal seconds cadence let's see i think does that kind of explain the watch you know very different than tuning fork it does run on quartz and this is why i want to do another watch and learn because i feel like you know let's fast forward past sundials and clepsidras which is a water clock and all the other stuff we used to use to keep time pendulum clocks let's get up to wristwatches that were automatics mechanicals then automatics pocket watches right and then after that you know the the first break was the accutron in 1960 it was powered by a tuning fork um and then eventually quartz supplanted that and kind of killed it we came out with solar we came out with kinetic um, oh, let's talk about kinetic in a second. We came out with kinetic. We uh, came out with spring drive, which is the perfect marriage between mechanical and electronic. Did a spring drive video. I explain exactly how it works. I'll, I'll link to it over here. Um, and then this is the next, I guess this is the, the next evolution, if you will. Um, I don't think anyone's used an electrostatic generator in a watch before. Why electrostatic generators? So let's talk about kinetics for a second. And again, I'll talk about kinetics more in the next watch and learn. A kinetic watch uses electromagnetics. That's, um, you know, you have a rotor wound with coil. It sits in a stator. Um, but they're very hard to power in a wristwatch. That's why kinetics have kind of died away because most people cannot give them enough power to keep them running. Uh, electrostatic generators, because it's there's no wound core, just these, just these, this disc that that, um, that rotates. Um, it can be made a lot thinner. Of course, then power output is is changed and stuff. But we can make it a lot thinner, and we can put it in a wristwatch. Yeah, it's not too thin, but it works. Uh, let's see. So you can see the whole thing. Oh, you know what? I guess I'll try it on so you guys can check it out. You've seen this on my wrist before. It, you know, it's large. Let's be honest with you. But you know, as as um. Accutron says uh, it's not a wristwatch, it's a conversation piece, or some other tagline like that. And it's very true. Um, just look at the beauty. Look at the, when the second hand is moving in that electrostatic motor is spinning, and then you have the kaleidoscope effect of the two turbines at the bottom. It really does look very, very cool. Um, I do have a space view from 1960 and change. 
um, which you know I'll bring into the next video. But this is really awesome looking. Definitely cool. Oh, it has loom. Let's check out the loom. Not only does it have loom, it has very good loom. Um, looks fantastic. Of course, you can't tell what 12 o'clock is, but I'm going to let that slide on this one. I let it slide on my pilot's watch, so I'll let it slide here as well. But it definitely glows well. You can see the time in the dark, and the second hand is not loomed, which is good because, hey, sometimes it's docked at 12 and it's not moving. And just like that, I don't know when the second hand stopped moving. Is it while I was filming it in light or while it was on my wrist? I really didn't pay attention. Um, but now you can see that the watch has... It's pretty much considered that I was not giving it enough energy, just kind of moving it around, showing you. So it stopped. And like I said, it's going to stop now because um, it's been five minutes. They consider the inactivity. Uh, and then after 10 more days, if it doesn't get enough activity, it will shut the whole watch down. Again, that doesn't make much sense to me, but I, I guess I'll have to investigate it some more and we'll see. But let's, I don't think I went, I don't think I zoomed in on the, uh, that motor before. So let's just check out the motor before we call it quits beautiful looking that's you know obviously it's it's stopped and there's the two generators boom so cool i think that is going to do it i hope you enjoyed the video this has been mark from longlwatch.com showing you the uh, accutron space view 2020 please like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe channel if you've not done so questions or comments put them down below and i'll be sure to address them as soon as i can thank you very much for watching Bye bye